wherever you are, you can join us as we lift up our voice and bless the King of Glory. Maybe I will be a your true sufferer, say me kaya ho. I am true, true your boy. Send some fantasy for the GIE. Be a new one in the same. Good day, good day, good day. Welcome to our video on bearings. Like you know, your favorite teacher said to your films. Alright, so far I believe we've been enjoying the tutorials and following boot to boot on some of the challenges in mathematics. Okay. Today's video is like I said earlier, it's going to focus on what bearings and perhaps this latter part of the video we are going to incorporate what vectors because bearing and vectors they move together okay so concept of what bearings bear so bearings when we say bearing what does it mean actually bearing is not anything different from what you know as angles and then their magnitudes and all that okay so let's take it for instance bearing is direction okay directions if i have i'm maybe facing this place and i said oh i'm moving 60 degrees from the north so everything is cartesian plane. you know even this world is divided into four parts in four zones the north the south the, the east and the west okay depending on how you are looking at me so so what happens what I'm trying to say is that depending on the direction I take then I can take a specific what reading to follow and know this person has gone this way or you've gone southwards or you've gone east or you've gone west and all that okay so all of them is what we are actually looking at over here so imagine I take what a car and I move 65 degrees towards the north or 65 degrees towards is more or less west. So 65 degrees towards the left or 65 degrees towards uh, southeast, southwest and all those things, right? So how is that going to show uh, in order for us to know the magnitude or the total distance I've traveled? And if you want to catch me, what is the bearing I have to move from directly to go and catch this person? Now, let me show you some of the applications of bearing. The bearing is very important because, one, in the military, military applications, let's say you are targeting a missile, you're maybe you are, you are trying to direct a missile to someone, and then the person is located on your radar. Your radar is showing the location of the person, and then you are supposed to fire your shots. Now, depending on how you are actually going to tilt your um, gun or whatever, missile launcher or whatever, depending on the direction you tilt it, you know, those things they go straight. So, depending on the bearing you set it, it launches straight to the target. And in military or in maybe war and all those things, you better not miss your target. So it means that you need to actually calculate the exact location of what your target in order for you to launch whatever you want to launch. Let's take planes, for instance. They start, they move in a specific direction and pick that direction to the land. Okay? Train will not be turning second, second, in the end. So from this, I move towards this direction and the line. Interestingly, we have uh, new companies springing up, and one of them in Ghana here is Zipline. So if you ask Zipline people, how do they launch their roads? There is a bit of bearing in there. Because if you are going to, I'm going to send this to, towards this direction. I need to calculate the exact bearing, the exact location, and then the distance to it to travel 
and that is what will help me to do the recoil and the firing and then what the the the, the flight the uh, should i say how much the magnitude the speed and all those things i need to do those calculations in order for us to find so that's why you are being introduced to the concept of what very okay and this one we are will be looking at is always every direction is based on the north south east and west more or less in mathematics we call it what the cartesian plane all right so fine let's say we have this this here right and then this is our north our south our east and then works so we have this situation here okay we have two types of displacement we call in mathematics here we call it for forward and then the backwards so we call it the forward bearing and then the backwards forward bearing so if i am a vector and i move from this point here so this becomes my origin say o and i move 65 degrees east Hmm? East. When I say that 65 degrees east, then you'll be confused because it can be here or it can be here. All in the towards the east. So I need to specify whether northeast, southeast, whatever. Okay, so the question will have to specify. Else, when the question asks you the bearing from somewhere to somewhere, right? The bearing of somebody from this person, then you are going to be able to know whether it's southeast or whatever and all that. Okay. So that is the concept we introduce you. Then we will gradually look at how that is going to translate it to them. Okay. So now the origin is the center of wherever you are moving. Okay, so the origin. So when I say bearing of point P from O bearing of a certain point P hmm, from O or bearing of the vector P from O hmm, is let's say 35 degrees so we have a situation we say what? bearing of P from what? O is 35 degrees Normally, we are dealing with 360 degree system, so normally 3 degrees. So you see them writing 0, 3, 5 degrees. The same thing. Okay. So bearing of P from O is 35 degrees. And then the bearing of what? O from P is. What, what will bearing of O from P be? So let's say I'm asking this question. The bearing of P from O is 35 degrees. What will be the bearing from, of O from where? P. Now, what does this O from P, P from O, and all these things mean? When you understand it, you can simply do this. Now, in each of them, in each of the statements here, you will realize, okay, you will realize that there we are dealing with two here. So depending on which one you are treating as well, the origin. So for every bearing, there must be an origin mentioned in it. Okay, the origin. So let's say from this drawing here, our origin is O. So it means that O becomes what? My origin. And then this becomes say, my destination. Okay. So what does this mean? Anytime the origin is mentioned second. That is P from the origin. P from the origin. Right? And not Q from the origin. Q from whatever. Then, it is called a forward bearing. So anytime the origin is mentioned second, it is called what? The forward, forward, what? Bearing. Anytime the origin is moved. Second. And anytime the origin is mentioned first, okay, anytime the origin or the common or the reference point is mentioned first, 
then this becomes what we call what? a black bell. Please take note. Take note of this. So when the, uh, this is the only differentiation you need to do. So when it's forward bell, when it's like this, it's forward, a backward word, bell. So bearings here we will not be dealing with just values, but we'll be drawing them. After drawing it, before we'll be able to understand and get the exact magnitude and all those things. Okay, good. So then, how do we draw a forward bearing, and how do we draw what a backward or back bearing? Right. Good. We are dealing with the origin, which is O. Anytime you identify that it is a forward bearing, we read it from where the North Pole. Hello, I believe you are listening. Any time we identify it to be what a forward bearing, we read it what from the North Pole clockwise. From the North Pole what clockwise. And any time we realize that it's a backward bearing or a back bearing, we read it from the what the negative of the North Pole, which is what the South Pole clockwise. We read it from the south pole clockwise. Now, this is what I mean. I am talking about my bearing of what? P from what? O. Okay, P from O. So it means that let's say this is point P over here. So it's the new destination. So this is my destination. And then that's my origin. Now, if we are looking at the bearing from what? P from O, if I am treating this as my origin, then it means that this becomes what? A forward bearing. So I must read it from where? The North Pole. Therefore, I'll read what? 35 degrees. So 35 what? degrees. And then I'm going to draw my line. So wherever it ends becomes what? Point P. I say so because we said P from the origin, I read it from where? The North Pole. Are you okay? So if we are having this situation where it is what the bearing of what O from P, and we are still treating the O as our origin, then you realize that the origin now comes first. Hence when we want to calculate the bearing of what O from P, then that value is going to what we are going to start reading it from where the South Pole. Okay, you start reading it from where the South Pole. So you read it from the South Pole what? clockwise till you meet the point P. So then you are going to read, read, read this here from here to here is what 90 degrees. Yes, you are no more, you're not yet there. Is what 90 degrees, then finally you get to where this place plus 35 degrees. So, what you are actually saying is that when you are looking for what the, 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 the back bearing that is what from O to P, and O is our origin, so it came first, so it's a back bearing. So, O to P, then you read it from the south one till you get there. Hence, the bearing of what O to P is going to be 90 plus 90, then you add what, 35, which is going to be 215 degrees. 215. So 90 plus 90 plus this, like that. Okay, 215 degrees. So this is how the drawing is done. Now, if I reach here and I say oh, the bearing from O to P is 35, fine. And then the bearing from where? P to O is 215. You can confirm that using the destination uh, Cartesian plane as well. Let's say the destination P. This is the Cartesian plane for P. Then I don't want to use this 
as what my reference point anymore. I want to jump to where P as my reference point. Then what does that do? O from P and P now has become my origin because I'm dealing with this idea. So then we will be dealing with what? A forward bearing instead because P has now become the origin I'm using. So P becomes a forward bearing. So I'm going to read from the north side, which is 90 plus 90, 180. And then you know, alternate angle, the value is the same value, 35. So plus 9, 35, and that's all 215 degrees. So either you still maintain this as your origin and read this one back there, or you make the new point your new origin and read it what front there. Are you okay? That is how it's done. And when you are able to know how to draw P from O and then O from P and all those things, when you are able to know it, you can draw any bearing question given to you. You can draw it. Okay? You can draw it. Fine. Now, with these two established, we can then find a trend that, okay, we realize that when it is P from O, and O is my origin, is going to be front bearing, and therefore 35 fine will be read from the north. Now, if O is still my origin, it now comes first, then we are supposed to read it backwards like this to get my back bearing. If P was my origin, then this thing should have been read from the what? The south pole, and you see it would have been what? 35, just like this. And now P is now second, so this becomes a forward bearing now. So forward bearing read from the north pole to that point, and that's 215. Hence, we can conclude that, okay, if you are giving a question like this, and they said the bearing of P from O is 35, find the bearing of O from P. Then with this established, you don't even need to what, draw your bearing. You don't need to draw it. All you need to know is that from all this, when our theta given to you is less than what, 180 degrees, right? When your theta is less than 80 degrees, then you can simply say, okay, then the theta plus what, 180 degrees. So that is when this your theta, this one, the theta given to you in the question is less than 180 degrees. Then all you need to do is what? You add 180 to the answer. To the theta. And then that's the answer. Okay? But in the event when, when theta is greater than what? 180 degrees. When theta is greater than 180 degrees, then that situation, you just reverse the sign. And then it becomes theta minus what? 180. 80 degrees okay theta minus 180 degrees so you can use the same establishment on this so you can see that this one here then what you to say 35 is what lesser than 180 right so it means that if p from o is 35 which is lesser than 180 then if i'm looking for o from p is that going to be 0 35 Plus what 180 and that's what 250. So then you don't need to what cap draw all these things and do all the necessary um, uh, whatever. Are you okay? Good. That is that you can decide to draw or you can just decide to do it this way. Now let's try this exercise. Let's say I said okay, the bearing of x from y is uh, 135 what, degrees and the bearing of what y from x is what okay y from x is what you can decide to actually draw or use this concept now if you want to use this concept then you identify what are these theta given to you is it less than 180 or greater than 180 if it is less, then what do we do? 
we just add what 180 to the value so then it means that here our y from what x the bearing is going to be what 135 plus what 180 and at the end of the day everything is going to be what 200 and 315 degrees okay 315 degrees right so that is what is going to happen here so you just know this without even you drawing it but if in case you want to confirm and you want to draw no problem you can just quickly let's just see if we want to do the confirmation with the, the drum okay we want to do the confirmation with the drum therefore this is going to be it's going to be this uh, we have the n s and then e and w and then we are saying that our x from y is 135 so 135 we go at 90 plus 45 so 90 plus 45 so it means from year to year is 45 okay so 90 plus 45 is going to be what 135 because we are treating y as a front bearing so this is going to go this way okay now immediately this y comes in front then this becomes with the back bearing to this hence we are supposed to read that one from where the south pole so when you read that from the south pole then it's going to be 90 right plus 90 180 okay plus what 90 and that's what 270 plus 45 270 plus 45 270 plus what 45 and it's an obvious what 350 let us pick a question which encompasses all these front bearings we are going to do, right? It encompasses the front and then it encompasses the back. In our previous back. video, we learnt what forward and backward bearing, how we are going to represent bearing graphically and all that. In this video, let's see how we are going to apply the forward and the backward bearing to solve distance bearing problems distance bearing problems so for instance let's say I take car and I live here to the next point okay to the next point then I move again towards a different direction okay and finally I move backwards so that is a movement right on directions and then distances so when that happens then we call it a distance bearing problem so I'm trying to see, okay, this man went 35, 45 to this direction. That means when I am here and I want to go this direction, what direction should I move in from this point to get there? Okay, so that is what we are actually looking at. Okay. Fine. So consider this question displayed. Now this question is saying that an aeroplane flew from where? A point... Uh, town what A and then travels what 200 kilometers from a bearing of uh, uh, 135 to town B. So let's just make town. This is town A, okay? So town A. And I told you every point in bearing is a Cartesian plane. So this is what town A, town A, and then we have N, north, south, east, and then what west. So town A. And then this man moves what 135 degrees from town A to town B, which is about 200 kilometers away from where he is actually staying. So he moved um, 135 from A to B. So where is the origin? The origin is definitely A. Okay. So it means that he moved from where A to B. So when we want to write that bearing, we will say what the bearing of what B from A okay get the difference bearing of B from A is saying that you are moving from where town A to B that's the meaning so in this case just know that all the questions you'll be doing bearing distance bearing problems are normally forward bearings 
okay they are all forward bearings okay so now let's help we are moving from town a to a town b 135 for degrees so that is going to be 90 plus what 45 and therefore this guy move this way 45 so plus here will be what 135 what? degrees so that the movement he move and he said he moved to a point called a town b and then the distance between the two of them is what 200 what? kilometers i believe you are following so this guy move from a to b we've, we've already established this in our previous lesson so we know that for bearing wherever you end there should be a Cartesian plane until you get back to your region okay and then when he moved there so it means that by virtue of what um, this is a Cartesian plane this is a Cartesian plane therefore if this move coordinate geometry one we will accept the fact that the angle made here is the same as what the angle made here which is what alternate angles so it means that here is also 45 what, degrees hence this is right angle 90 degrees so if here is 45 here is also 45 what, degrees okay 45 degrees as well so that is what is going to happen at this point at this juncture good now his journey did not end there they said he moved from what town b to a new town called town c which is also 250 kilometers from where he stands. 250 kilometers right on a bearing of what 45 degrees okay on a bearing of 45 degrees so now they are saying that when he got to town b he moved to town c on a bearing of 45 degrees so where is 45 you start reading from where the uh, north pole because i told you distance bearing problems all of them are what forward bearing so we are moving from where the north pole so north pole 45 degrees this guy went to town c so this is 45 degrees then he went to town c which is 250 kilometers so that will be quite tall all right so this is town c north east south and then what west simple so i went to town c so by virtue of what the fact if here is 45 then that means here is automatically 45 what, degrees that is coordinate geometry one hence from here to here becomes equally 45 what, degrees so now the question is what find the distance from what a to c and then the bearing from a from c now it means that we want the distance from here to this place over here okay we want the distance from here to this place over here so practically the movement of this car has become more like a, a triangle okay a triangle but we can only solve this triangle easily when this is a right angle triangle so you must check out and see if this is what a right angle triangle so perhaps you have this you have that and the rest very well now the first question is asking us to find the distance from a to c that's what cool then we are also asked to find what the distance uh, the bearing of what a from c if i'm choosing c as my origin then it means that c comes second therefore we are going to perform a forward bearing at point c okay but if i'm using a as my origin where i'm going to do the reading then a comes second a comes first therefore it's going to be what a back bearing at a you get it so depending on who you want to treat as what your origin is going to translate to what exactly you are supposed to use whether forward or backwards so if i'm using c then c appears second they say what a from c so c appears second so i'll read it up to the a line okay 
But if I'm using what uh, uh, forward bearing from here, then a backward bearing from this because A appeared first, then it means I have to read from here up to this point. Okay. So in order for me to read from here to this point, I need to know because here is 90 degrees. Here is equally 90 degrees, 180 degrees plus this, then that is going to be 225 degrees. But that's not our destination. Our destination is here. The bearing toward A. This is the A line, right? So the bearing. So we need to know the distance that is here. Okay? We need to know the distance that is present with, over here. And that is the next challenge. Okay. So we don't know the distance here. And then we don't know the angle, sorry, it's an angle. So we don't know the angle that is here as well, okay? We don't know the angle that is here. But fortunately for us, when we take this triangle A, B, C, we identify that one of the corners of this triangle is what? 45 degrees and then 45 degrees making what? 90 degrees, okay? And we are always excited when we get a triangle that what, one of the corners is 90 degrees. Then we know that this triangle is what, a right angle triangle. And when it's right angle triangle, uh, then it's very easy to use our trigonometrical ratios and things that uh, we, we, we study right, in trigonometry. Alright. So, if that is the case, then we can bring out this triangle ABC. We can bring out triangle ABC where we can put it here like this. So this is triangle, this point A, that's point A. Point B is here, and then point C is actually here. So we are after uh, this angle here, which we don't know. Okay, we are after that angle. And it's at uh, C, right? And here is 90 degrees because it's 45 plus 45. And then here, hmm, that one too, we don't know this small portion, so we don't know the full angle over here. So we don't know yet. But one thing we know is that we know AB, right? As what? 200. And we know BC as 250. Okay, we know AB as 200 and we know BC as 250. Yes, so by virtue of what we learned, we realized that, oh, okay, for the trigonometrical ratios or the trigonometry ratios, all we need is to know two sides. When we know two sides, we can find the angle. Okay. When we know two sides, we can find the angle. And then here too, according to Pythagoras theorem, when you have a right angle triangle that you know two of the sides, then it's very easy to find the third one side. Are you okay? It's very easy to find the third side. So at this point, I want you to pause, relax, and digest this whole thing until you are sure you are following me. Then continue playing the video, right? Make sure this is not an active learning, so it's more or less a passive one, but you must make it as active as possible because, yes, that is the alternative you have here. All right, so we know two of the sides A, B, and then what? B, C. And then we are after what they said the distance between A and C. So A C. And then we when we know this angle here, then we can get the bearing from where? C to A. Okay? We can get the bearing from C to A. Right. When we are we are after that. So then we can just use Pythagoras theorem to find the AC because the first question is asking us to get the distance. So Pythagoras theorem says what AC squared should be equal to what AB squared plus BC squared. 
So if you know this, then all you need to do is to what, apply that 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 theory. You just apply it, right? So we are looking for AC. So then AC is going to be what the root of uh, 200 square plus what 250 square, and therefore AC, as you know, 320.16 meter. Okay, so that is going to be the distance kilometers, right? This is in kilometers. So if you want to make it to the nearest what? Yeah, you want to make it from the near to the nearest uh, kilometer, you just run this up to become 320 kilometers. Very good. Now, when we get the distance now, we need what? This, in order to compute the back bearing for that. So, when we do this, we know what? We know the opposite, we know the adjacent. So, we can use tan, okay? So, then we know that tan of what? Theta. Is going to be the opposite, which is what AB over the adjacent, which is BC, right? So the tan of theta, which we don't know, is going to be 200 over 250. Okay, so then you remember we met this before, and we said to make theta or the angle free, you have to apply the principle of actan or tan inverse. Okay. So then this one theta here is going to be the tan inverse of 200 over 250. So basically, this one is going to be 39 what degrees. To the nearest degree, if you want. So 39 degrees. So if it's 39 degrees, that is not what we are asked. We are asked what? The bearing from C. A from C and we are already at that point C so it becomes a foreign bearing. So this one goes from here uh, up to this place. So we know only here to be what 39 what, degrees. Therefore, when we are looking for the bearing of what A from C, reading as C, then it's going to be what? We are just going to use it to be 190 plus 90 that is what 180 plus 45 and that's what 225 then you add it and then that becomes uh, 264 so then you're bearing of what a from c from c becomes what 264 what degrees like that okay 264 degrees. That's why you want to read it that way. But if you want to treat A as the origin to read that bearing, then because they are saying bearing of what A from C, then A then becomes what uh, the origin. We are using A as the origin, then this becomes what a back bearing. And if it's a back bearing, then we then need to read it from this point here. Okay? So if you know here to be 39, here to be 90. And here is 45, right? Then, um, it will be more like you just have to get this small angle here. When you get this small angle, you add up everything plus this, plus that, and then you, you are good to go. Okay? You are good to go. When you get that value, okay, when you get a value, I think it's going to be 6 or so. So, yeah, 6. So, this is going to be what? 6 degrees. Okay, six degrees. So here is going to be um, 84. 84 degrees. So when you are reading this and it's a back bearing, then it's going to move from here 90 plus what? 90. That's 180. So 180 plus what? 84. And that is going to be what? 264 degrees. Okay. So, depending on where you are reading your bearing from, when the origin you are reading from comes second, then it must be read from where? The North Pole. And when the origin you are reading from becomes the first, then it must be read from where? The South Pole. Like that. Okay.
So this is how you are going to approach the distance bearing problems, okay? The distance bearing problems. Now my my concern, yes. Normally, normally, the questions you going to get, they are normally after the whole drawing you get right angle triangle, so you can have section of right angle triangle in it. Then you can just pass through Pythagoras and then the normal trigonometrical ratios to get it. Okay, but in the events where it doesn't become what. Nine, none of the corners here is what 90 degrees, then what do we do? So in that event, then what happens? We need to resort to two ways of solving uh, triangles, uh, triangular, uh, should I say, vectors or theories or whatever. Uh, we have two rules, which is the sine rule and then the cosine rule, right? The sine rule and then the concept of that, the cosine rule. So you can um, actually get that situation. So maybe in our uh, lessons, in my next lesson, I'm going to introduce you to a situation where we are having this place not being the same as what, not being a right angle triangle at all. And that doesn't mean you can't solve for it, you can still solve for the distance. Okay, so I'm going to see you in that lesson, right? But before I leave you, I always have a gift for you. Wherever you are, you can join us as we lift up our voice and bless the King of Glory. Maybe I will be a your sufferers and a kind of your boy. Sounds of fantasy or she are you. Be the born in the same. Always really free to contact us for any assistance and solutions to your problems. Okay. Once again, thank you very much for joining this class. I, I believe it's been okay, and you are going to continue to push harder and harder until you are there. Okay. So always make sure you perform this kind of learning at your pace and at your convenience. You can read. Uh, play the video over and over until you can say word for word what I say exactly here. Okay, so I'm glad we are enjoying ourselves and we are following. So I'm gonna see you in the next video. So please stay healthy, stay strong, let's have and always pray to God. Thank you very much. It's your say. So,